If you ever play games like Steins Gate, Dangan Ronpa, or Doki Doki Literature Club, then you know what a visual novel is. These types of games are usually made with engines that were built specifically for visual novels such as Renpy. But you can actually use GDevelop to make visual novel using the Yarn Dialog 3 extension, and I'll show you how in this video. A bit of a disclaimer before we begin, I'm not a programmer, nor do I claim to be an expert on GDevelop, so if I made some mistake in this video, please don't hesitate to correct me in the comment. I would really appreciate it. I've provided a download link to all the assets that are used in this video in the description, but you can also use your own assets if you want. Let's start by creating a new project. And then import all of the assets that we'll need. They're all gonna be sprites, except for the options box, which is going to be a tiled sprite with the size of 40 by 40. I'll explain why we use tiled sprite later. We're gonna have to create a few more objects for this project, which are the text that'll be used for the names, dialogues, and options. It's better to use BB text so you can have control over the customization of the text. I'm just gonna set these objects as name txt, dialog txt, and options txt. I'll give them all the color white and size 32. Next, I'm gonna put all these assets on the scene, except for the options box and the option txt. You can arrange the rest however you want, just make sure the name and the dialog txt covers up the whole box. Now, go to the event sheet, add a new event, condition, at the beginning of the scene. We're going to create a new dialog data by using the load dialog data from JSON file. That JSON is the name of the file format used by Yarn. It's basically like how Microsoft Word saves file as .doc or Photoshop.psd. Since we don't have any dialog file yet, you can create one by clicking on this button. Your Yarn UI might look a bit different from mine because I have customized it, but don't worry, everything still works the same. I'm gonna start by naming the file. And then you can see the square in the middle here. Oh, by the way, if you made a text-based game using Twine before, then this might look familiar to you. A lot of the function pretty much works the same here. Alright, let's click on this passage. You can see the title, the tags, and this is where you're going to type all of your dialogues. I'm gonna call this begin. You don't have to worry about this tag part. Usually in Twine, they will use to install custom JavaScript, CSS style sheet, and many others. But again, we don't have to worry about that. There are three different line types that we can use, which are command, options or link, and regular tags. For now, we're just gonna focus on the regular tags. Let's start with the first text, and then second text, you can type whatever you want here, I'm just using this as an example. Lastly, for the third line, I'm gonna write something a bit longer. Okay, now if we click outside of the box, we're back at the previous menu, and we can save this. We don't want our text to appear on the screen together, what we want is for them to appear letter by letter like a typewriter. This is also how other visual novels shows their text. For that, we're going to use one of the dialog trees mechanics, which is scroll clip text. Though before we can do that, we're gonna create a timer for the typewriter effect. Search start timer. We're gonna use the scene timer. I'm just gonna call it typewriter. Still at the beginning of the scene, we'll add another action. Start a dialog from a branch. Here we'll enter the title of the yarn passage that we have our dialogues on. Remember, I named my title as begin. So as you can see here, that means as soon as we start the game, it'll start showing you the text in that passage. Now, let's make a new event. Condition is dialog line type. As you can see on the explanations here, the three line types which are regular text, options and command. Since we only have the regular text, we'll enter text. Next, for the action, we want to change the dialog txt into the text that we've written on the yarn passage. 
For that, we click on the object and BB code text set to we use an expression which is dialog tree clip line text. You can read the description here on what this expression does. So basically, this action is what's going to give our dialog that typewriter effect. Now we want to add a sub event. Remember, after we made that .json file, when I say we'll use a mechanic called scroll clip text, we're going to activate that action right here. For the condition, we want timer value, scene timer. Remember that timer we created at the beginning as well? We're going to use it here by entering its name, which I named it typewriter. Pick greater or equal to number i'm just gonna do 0 0.1 second and then add another action to reset the typewriter timer now let's pause and take a step back real quick at the beginning of the scene we started the typewriter timer which means it starts counting from 0 until it reaches 0 0.1 seconds at which point it'll show a letter and then because of this action the timer will reset to zero, at which point it'll start counting back up until it reaches 0.1 seconds again and show a new letter. And this loop will continue over and over again until it reaches the end of the dialog line. I'll preview the game real quick so you can understand what I mean. As you can see, the first text was written out letter by letter every 0.1 seconds. Now, we're going to add a new event under this sub-event so we can continue this dialog. The action is go to the next dialog line. And the condition for that is, well, whatever you want, really. You can use key press, key release, or mouse click. For me, I'm going to use the left mouse button release. If you're wondering why I don't use the mouse press instead, it's because the player can hold the button and it might screw up the whole thing. So personally, I think that the key release or mouse release is the better option. Another condition that we need to add is clip text has complete scrolling. This will prevent the player from completely skipping to the next dialog line before everything on the current one appears. Let's preview the game now. Left click. You might realize that the third dialog is a bit slow. What you can do to fix that is changing the time right here. Maybe instead of 0 0.1 seconds, we can use 0 0.05 seconds. Preview. It is much faster now. Another way you can fix this is by adding another event. The action will be complete clip scrolling text. So this will instantly show all of the text of the cotton line on the screen. For the condition, I'm going to use a different button. Because if you use the same button, it might screw up the whole thing. I'll use the release right mouse button. Another condition that we need to add is the clip text has finished scrolling, but inverted. That means this action will only work if the text hasn't completed scrolling yet. Let's preview the game again. Left click to continue the dialog works, and RMB to skip the dialog also works. Alright. I'm gonna end the tutorial right here because I don't want this video to be too long and overwhelming. I have made separate videos that explain how to add options to your story, change names and images using commands, and even animate your image using the twin behavior. You can check those videos right here.